So for completing the square, we get f of x equals x squared plus 4x, so I'm going to group those together, minus 12. To complete the square, I take that 4 divided by 2, which is 2, and square it, which is actually just 4. But since I added 4 to the right side, I also want to subtract 4. So that if I was to simplify all of this, the 4's would cancel, leaving us with our original equation. And then finally, I end up with x plus 2 squared minus 16. What I notice is that this means that my vertex has an x-coordinate of negative 2 and a y-coordinate of positive 16. I'm sorry, negative 16. We only switch the sign on the x-coordinate because it's x minus that coordinate. So this parabola has a vertex at negative 2 comma negative 16. And if we scroll back up to our graph, we find that that's the case. To plot the rest of my graph, what you want to do then is to plug in some values. I suggest if your vertex is at negative 2, 16, look at that negative 2. That is your line of symmetry. I would plug in values near that line, so maybe plug in values that are 2 away from negative 2. So plug in f of 0 and f of negative 4. Plugging in f of 0, we find that that equals negative 12. And plugging f of negative 4, we find that that equals negative 12 as well. And the reason those are the same value, again, is because quadratic equations are symmetric. So if we were to go back up here, we should have points at 0, negative 12, and at negative 4, negative 12. And that is graphing by completing the square. Another thing you can start noticing now is that when our function, our quadratic, is completely multiplied out, so it's in its three terms, if you look at your squared term, if the squared term is positive, then we get a concave up parabola. And if it is negative, we get concave down. The way you can think about this is that concave up is like a smiley face. So if we're positive, we're happy and smiling. Concave down looks like a frowny face. So if the square term is negative, we're sad and frowning. It might seem a little young to remember it that way, but if it works for you, then stay with that. Okay, so a few last notes. The method we choose may depend on the problem. Sometimes the quadratic cannot easily be factored, or the quadratic equation gives us a non-real solution. So that's when we use a completing the square method. For example, if we have g of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 8, if you work this out with the quadratic, you'll end up with x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 16, which is a non-real solution, in which case we would use completing the square. Or maybe we have a function that is difficult to complete the square with, so instead we would want to use a factoring method, because that might be easier, or the quadratic equation. The method, just work with what works best. If it doesn't seem to be working, you can always try the other solution, or do both.